Okay, new topic today. I want to do a little warm up here. It's going to help us with the topic. Um, the square root of 9, and then after the square root, we have the second power. Well, the square root of 9 is not irrational, it's 3. Okay. But now we have 3 to the second power, which means we take 3 times 3. That equals 9. Okay. So the answer to this is 9. So the square root of 9 to the second power is 9. Okay, let's look at the next one. The square root of 16 to the second. Well, 16 is a perfect square, so it's 4 to the second. And then 4 to the second would be 4 times 4, which is 16. So the square root of 16 to the second is 16. So think about it. If the square root of 9 to the second is 9, and the square root of 16 to the second is 16, the square root of 25 to the second is probably just going to be 25. Okay. See, the square root and the second power just cancel each other out, and I end up with 25. And it works the same way if you have an expression with a variable. The square root of x plus 3 to the second is just going to be the expression x plus 3, and the square root goes away. Now, in this lesson, okay, we're going to be solving equations where the variable is inside of a square root. Now, this is a bad one to start with. I want to do these two first, and I want you to add something to this one. I want you to put a 2 in front of that. So let's solve this one first. Now, when solving for a variable inside of a square root or inside of any kind of root or radical, okay, there's two pro there's two steps you got to think about, okay? The first step is solving for the square root, okay? And then the second step is solving for the variable inside of the square root, okay? So here's what I'm talking about when I say solve for the square root. Well, you make a line on the side where the square root's at, okay? If it's on one side of the equation. Now, you got two numbers outside of that square root, an 8 and a minus 32. So you mark the 8 with a multiplication sign, and then you have minus 32. Now, if you have plus or minus, you have to get rid of that first, okay? So the first step, I'm going to put, I'm just going to list the steps here. We have to get rid of the number that's, being, that's added or subtracted. So we get rid of the minus 32 with a plus 32. Then, after that, we get rid of the number. If there's a times number, we get rid of that with dividing by 8. Okay. Then, after that, we're going to get rid of our square root with a second power. Okay. So, you get rid of plus or minus first. You get rid of the times second. If there is times or if there is plus or minus, then you get rid of the square root with the second power. So now you carry out what you put. So you plus 32 to get rid of the minus 32. And then 8 times the square root of x, 0 plus 32 is 32. So that's done. Now you get rid of your divide 8, or, or times 8 with divide by 8. And then 32 divided by 8 is 4, and we have the square root of x. Now it's time to get rid of the square root with the second power. Okay, if there's a square root, you parenthesize both sides and put a second power outside both of them. So the square root and the second power here cancel out, and now I will have just x. And then 4 to the second power would mean 4 times 4, which is 16. Okay, now on the solve for x, you want to make a box here to the side. This one's kind of redundant, but I'll talk about it. You have x to the first only, so x only. So you'd use linear properties. There'd be one answer. But x is already solved for. It's equal to 16. Okay? Now, if you want to check your answer, you would place, you would put your answer, six, here's the original problem. That's the original problem before we did anything. We put 16 in for x, so 8 square root 16 minus 32 equals 0. Now use order of operations. You get rid of your square root first, that's equal to 4. So we have 8 times 4 minus 32 equals 0. Then you need to multiply next, and that's 32 minus 32 equals 0. 32 minus 32 is 0, and 0 equals 0. 
Yeah, okay. We got the same number, so you can check that. So 16 is the answer because when I work the equation forward, I got the same value on each side. Now, if you had 0 and 5, that means we did something wrong. They got to be the same. Okay, now the next one. <clears throat> same thing. All these are the same. You solve for your square root. Then you solve for your variable, which is going to be x. Okay. So... There's two numbers outside of the square root. You have a 2, that's times the square root, and then a minus 4. Again, the minus plus number has to get, we got to get rid of that first. So a minus 4 we get rid of with plus 4. And then we get rid of the times number with divide by 2. Then we get rid of the square root with the second power, same as I did on the last one. So plus 4, and that's going to be 20. Now you got to divide by 2. 20 divided by 2 is 10. And they have to be done in this order. Okay, Plus minus comes first, then division, or times it will be division, but then the second power. Square root of 5x. Okay, Now, second power that, because in the square root and the second power cancel, and I have just the 5x expression. 10 to the second, that's 10 times 10, and that equals 100. Okay, now solve for x, okay? So, that's when I make my box, okay, my, my solution box, okay? Um, I've got x only in the equation, so that's linear properties, so there's one answer, so linear properties. You get times, so you just need to divide by 5, and that gives me my answer. 100 divided by 5 equals 20. Okay, there's your answer. Now, if you want to check your answer, this is the original problem. You have 2 times, and then we're going to put square root, okay, and then 5x. Well, that's going to be 5 times 20, because x is 20, I think. Minus 4 equals 16. So the square root, 5 times 20 is 100, and then the square root of 100 then is 10. Okay. So we have 2 times 10 minus 4 equals 16. Well, 2 times 10 is 20, minus 4 equals 16, and then 20 minus 4 is 16. 16 equals 16. We got the same number on each side. So it's right. Okay, now we're going to do these outside too. So again, solve for the square root and then solve for the x. Well, the square root's easy to solve for. We don't have any numbers outside of the square root. Everything we have is inside the square root. So I don't have to add or subtract. I don't have to divide. I just go right to my second power. Okay, so second, second, that cancels and you have 3x plus 1. 9 to the second, that would be 9 times 9, and 9 times 9 is 81. Okay, now you solve for x. Well, you got x only, so linear properties, one answer, because x, so you subtract 1, that's 80. And you divide by 3. 80 divided by 3 is a pretty sloppy, it's a repeating decimal. Which means I want that second PR beat into a fraction, so it's exact 26 and 2 thirds. Okay. Now I'm not going to check the rest of the answers. Just yet. Okay, the square root of x plus 3. And then after the square root, we have plus 8 equals 15. So you have to solve for your square root, and then solve for your x. Okay, solve for the square root. Well, the square root's on that side of the equation. You have one number outside. It's a plus 8, okay? There's no times. So if there's no time, so we'll get rid of the plus 8 with minus 8. And then I would divide, but there's nothing to divide by because there's no times. So then I go to the second power. And that'll get rid of the square root. So I minus 8, and that's 7.
Then second power will get rid of our square root. X plus 3. 7 to the second means 7 times 7, and that equals 49. Now we solve for x again. You have x only, so we're going to apply linear properties to solve it, meaning I just find the side on the x and subtract 3. And that is 46. Okay. okay, now I want to change some of these so you get a wide variety, wider variety. I want you to take out that minus 2, and I want you to put a 3 in front, please. Okay, a 3 in front of it. Then, that one's alright. Or no, hold on a second. No, this one will be okay. I want you to take out the plus 5, please. And then I want you to put a 2 in front of that. Okay. All right, so this next one, again, 3 times the square root of x minus 6 equals 4. Okay. So you need to solve for your square root first. Okay, so square root's on this side. Now we've got a 3 outside the square root. There's no sign between that and the square root. It's times. Okay. So. I just have this one number here to get rid of. Now, I'm not going to put, I'm not, I don't have to add or subtract because there's no number outside the square root being added or subtracted. It's just the 3. So I go to the divide by 3, and then I get rid of my square root with a second power. Okay. So we divide by the 3 first. Shoot. Not 3, I want 2. Okay, that's my fault. 2. Or no, we can go with 3. We can go with 3. Change that 4 then, if we're going to do that, to a 12. Okay, just change it. Change it 4 to a 12. So again, divide by 3, because you had a 3. 3 is the only number you had outside, and it was time, so you're going to divide. You don't have a number you have to add or subtract. So that's 4, and we have the square root of x minus 6. Now we're talking, okay? Second power, because that takes out the square root, and I have x minus 6. 4 to the second, that's going to be 4 times 4, and that is 16. Okay. And now we solve for the x. Okay. Again, you have x to the first power only in the equation, so you're using linear properties to solve for it. Means you come over here, get rid of your minus 6 with plus 6, and 16 plus 6 is 22. Okay. Okay. All right, next problem. Um, the square root of x plus 9, and after the square root, you have minus 5 equals 2. Okay, so solve for square root, then solve. Okay, so outside the square root, you have a 5. It's a minus 5, okay? So you'll need to plus 5 to get rid of that. And we don't have to divide because there's no multiplying number in front of the square root. Now, get rid of your square root then with the second power. So plus 5, and then the second power will get rid of the square root. The stuff inside the square root, that's what the solve for x is for, okay? So, plus 5 to the 2, that takes you to 7, x plus 9, okay, then second power both sides, you got to remember the second power to get rid of your square root, so we have x plus 9, and then 7 to the second power, that's 7 times 7, and that's 49, okay, now solve for x, so you have x only, so we will be applying the linear properties method. So I subtract 9, and I get 40. Okay, so x equals 40. Okay, next one, we got the square root of negative 3x plus 8 equals 6. Okay, so solve for square root, 
then solve for x. Okay. Um, do you have anything outside of the square root? No, we don't. So we get rid of the. So we don't have to get rid of anything else. Any of the. There's no operations outside the square root. So we go right to the second power to lift the square root. So we have negative 3x plus 8, and then 6 to the second is 6 times 6, and 6 times 6 is 36, okay? Now we solve for x. So again, you have x to the first power only, meaning linear properties. So you have times negative 3 and plus 8. So again, we take out the plus 8 first, and that's 28. We take out the times negative 3 with divide by negative 3. Okay, 28 divided by negative 3, you get a repeating decimal, second PRB it, and you get negative 9 and 1 third. Okay. Remember, I'm not against decimals, just those ones that repeat, you need to put that. Okay, then the, the, this one, there's one on the back too. We have two square root of 5x plus 4, and then after the square root, minus 12 equals negative 6. So again, you have to solve for the square root, then you'll need to solve for the variable that is in the square root x. Okay. So square root, now there's two numbers outside the square root. Okay. So there's two things we have to do, since there's two numbers outside, two, you have to do two things before you do the second power. Second power is the last thing you do on that step. But before you do that, you got two operations. We got a times 2 and a minus 12. But you got to get rid of the right one first. You got to get rid of the minus or plus number first. You have to undo the addition or subtraction outside first before you undo the division. You can't divide by 2 first. You have to get, if there's two operations, you have to do the adding and subtracting first. So we get rid of the minus 12 with plus. 12, and then we get rid of the times 2 with divide by 2. They have to be done in that order, okay? So plus 12, negative 6 plus 12 is 6, and then 2 times the square root of 5x plus 4. Okay, then divide by your 2. <coughs> That's 3. We got the square root of 5x plus 4. Then second power. Second power, of course, takes out the square root. That's the point of that. So you have 5x plus 4. 3 to the second power, that's 3 times 3. And that's going to be 9. And now you solve for x. So you got x only. And you apply linear properties to solve for it. So you got times 5 plus 4. So you'd subtract 4 from both sides. That would be 5. 5 times x equals 5. Then you divide by 5, and x equals 1, okay? <coughs> okay, now we got one more. Now there's a couple problems. This isn't a hard problem, but you're going to do the same thing. you got square roots on both sides. So you're going to solve for your square root, and then you're going to solve for your variable just like before. Now, however, I don't make a wall or a line because the square root's on both sides. Do you have anything outside the square root on the circle that equals? Do you have anything outside the square root here? No, I don't think you do. Anything outside here? No. So we go right to the second power. So I parenthesize both sides and raise each side to the second power. Now, since there's square roots on both sides, then we just get cancellations. And I have 10x minus 3 on this side, and then 8x minus 11 on this side. Okay. Now, you can solve for x. Now, there are two x's, but they're both to the first power. So it's x only, and you're applying linear properties. Okay, okay so if you got x on opposite sides, you got to take out one of them. I would take out the smaller one, so I'd subtract 8x. And that's going to be 2x minus 3, and then negative 11. Now you have x on just the one side, you got times 2 and minus 3. So you take out your minus 3 with plus 3, 
and that's negative 8. Then you divide by 2, and x equals negative 4. Okay. Okay, and then the assignment. Remember, if you don't have anything outside the square root, then you go right to the second power. Okay. If you have two things outside the square root, you get rid of the plus or minus number first, then you divide, then you do the second power. Okay. Remember, when you have double square roots, you go right to the sec you second power both sides, and then you get 3x plus 8 equals x or 1x plus 4. Okay. Then you'd use your linear properties to solve for x. Of course, you'd have x on both sides, but you'd have to take out the smaller one.